Welcome to the Win Make Give Wealth Series. My name is Ben Kinney. I'm joined, as always, <laughs> unfortunately. Did you hear the drop in his voice, Bob? <laughs> with, with my friends, Chad Himes and Hello. Bob Stewart. Hello, Ben. Thanks for having us here, even we, though it sounds like you'd rather not. We really appreciate the opportunity <laughs> to be here. This ah. is a super exciting <laughs> subject. We're going to pick up the energy, and we are going to talk about compounding, compound interest, compound returns, because compounding is the most powerful way to get Gray Poupon Rich, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, Robin Leach style, aging ourselves. Absolutely. One night, long, long ago. Insert music, Dave. Something. I was texting a friend. True story. She recommends a show. Wait for- a minute. Is every other story not true? Please stay on track. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. True I story was- coming up. I know where he's going to go with this. I was texting a friend, true story, about a show. She said, you got to watch this show. I'd never heard of it. So I said, awesome. Where do I find it? She responded with Hulu. To which I said, I don't have Hulu. Her response, literally reading this right now. So get it. (laughs) I think you can afford $10 a month. Be in my normal Wealth Series on 24-7 guy. I simply did a small calculation and sent her a response. The value of $10 invested per month for the next 40 years at just a 10% rate of return is almost $64,000. It just seems like a lot to spend for a TV show. She responds with an emoji that looks like an eye roll one. (laughs) It is an eye roll one. (laughs) So I sent the math, a screenshot of the compound interest calculator, just showing how I got to that. And then she blocked you because you're one of the most boring friends she has. Is that (laughs) basically? And today you still have not. Or she asked you for a loan because you're one of the most financially responsible friends she has. I am that nerd who calculated the compound interest on a $10 Hulu monthly charge. I think all of us should have the compound interest calculator installed on our phone. It just seems reasonable to me. Sure. Unfortunately, that one friend did stop suggesting shows to me. So (laughs) I need to find some new sources of uh, recommendations. You guys have any free shows that Ben can watch? (laughs) But at the end of the day, it reinforces my point that compound interest is one of the most powerful concepts that we need to master and understand and think about it in all areas of our lives. I love that you said that sentence right there. Think about the things that we buy on a regular basis okay. for around $10. Sure. Where do we just go? Starbucks. Starbucks. I think my bill was $27. Sure, because you were kind enough to buy for all of us. We appreciate it. You're welcome, jerks. <laughs> we cost you um, compounded over 10 years. A lot. A lot. <laughs> $150,000 Starbucks we just went Man, to. Here's what compound interest is. Compounding is, is super simple. Write this down, everybody. It's interest paid on interest. If you were to put a chunk of your money, Bob, into a savings account, it'll start to earn interest. At the end of the first month, the bank deposits this new interest into your account, which gives you a new savings account balance of $100 and one penny, whatever that might be. The next month, you earn interest not on $100, but on the $100 and a few pennies. The original amount that we invested or saved, that's called our principal, Bob, principal, plus in our account, we have the interest. And this happens time and time again, month over month, and that interest begins to accrue on the interest and on the initial principal. And it grows bigger 
and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It was very exciting. I was expecting like something at the crescendo there, Ben. He just said said crescendo. (laughs) In the beginning, it doesn't seem like much. But over time, it looks like a hockey stick. What's the shape of a hockey stick, Bob? Um, He's drawing with his finger everywhere. You can see <laughs> That's very right helpful, now. Bob. Very, very helpful. <laughs> his finger is just going. It, it is goes, a straight line. It's straight for a long time, and at the end, it takes off at a very point. Like a rocket. Yes. Yeah, straight know. up. That's the sound of a rocket. Yes, okay. Okay. Compounding is the reason that anybody listening to this call can be wealthy, wealthier than their parents, wealthier than their friends, wealthier than their neighbors. We can't get the returns we want by just investing our regular income. We have to find a way to reinvest the money we make from our investing so that it can compound. Compounding affects things like our savings accounts, our checking accounts, but also our retirement accounts. Yep our investments in the stock market, yep. our real estate. Sure. Can I, take value, it, can I take it outside of the wealth series? Sure. Right? Our health, our relationships. I mean, putting in that time and effort with someone again and again and again is going to make that relationship stronger and stronger and stronger, or we don't spend that time with them weaker and weaker and weaker. This compound interest, while it's a key part of the wealth series, really covers every area of life. You're going to hear terms like compounding, compound interest, compounded returns. They all really mean the same thing. It just means that our assets are going to grow faster and faster over time, helping us do something that we're going to learn in the wealth series called flip the triangle. Remember that guy, Bob, that I said had an amazing first name? Benjamin. Benjamin what? Franklin. Benjamin Franklin wrote you know, 250 years ago. Money can beget money, and its offspring can beget more. Meaning, if you use money the right way, it can become this snowball that rolls down a hill and becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I want us, all of you listening, to live our financial life, that to, to live a financial life, based on a principle that every dollar has a exponentially greater future value if you leverage compounding. I want us to make decisions about how we spend, save, and invest based on the future value of that investment because we understand what those dollars could become. I read a survey when we were preparing for the Wealth Series Part Duh. 2.0. And it said that 69% of the population can't explain compounding and they don't really understand it. That's amazing. I mean, you gave such a simple explanation of it right at the beginning of this episode. Interest paid upon interest. It's very easy to explain as you have once you understand it. So for our listeners, those of us, I didn't get it until the first time we went through the wealth series where you really broke it down and made it that easy to understand. And once you get it, as you've said, this is a magical tool to understand. I was a finance major in college. Like, I'm sure we covered it, but the problem was going out into the world, like we must have covered it in a very academic manner. Like it wasn't something that you that I understood in my 20s, right? I, mean, I might have been able to give the definition, but in college, they probably represented it as what's called the future value of money. Yeah. That was an example to mathematically calculate the compounded value of an asset. Yeah, but they didn't give you the real world understanding of how that was going to play out in your life. No, you know? and that's so- how the Wealth Series is here for our audience because you've done such an amazing job, Ben, of taking some of these concepts and helping us all grasp them at such a level to be able to become tools in our wealth building opportunity lives. When I think back to my childhood education, I don't remember a lot. I remember how to spell icicle, I-C-I-C-L-E, because it just sounds cool, I-C-I-C-L-E. 
And I remember the definition of osmosis, the diffusion of water okay. from a selectively permeable membrane from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Wow. But I have no idea what the hell that, that means. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the point. Like people could say, well, compounding interest is interest paid on interest. Right. But they don't understand how it can actually affect and change our lives. So the principle is the initial amount of money that we put into an investment, like the first $1,000 we put into our retirement account or the down payment that we put on our house. That's variable one. You have okay. to understand principle, the, the starting amount. Number two, the rate of return. It's the amount that we earn on our investment. It's usually described as a percentage over a period of time, like a year. So that rate of return in your savings account right now, if you got a really good one because interest rates have been rising, I just saw it was like 3.75% you can earn as your annual rate of return on just having money in a savings account. Over periods of years, the S&P 500 has had a 10% or 11% or 13% rate of return. Real estate over a long period of time has had a 4%, 5% annual rate of return. The third variable is compounding frequency, Bob. How often the interests or returns are paid and added to the principal. And this is really, really important because if interest is paid only annually, okay. you miss 364 days of compounding. If I had $100 and I got a 10% rate of return, $100 would be my principal, 10% would be my rate of return. Okay. The interest paid would be $10. Right. And if that $10 was given to me at the end of the year, at the end of the year, I'd have $110. Right. But if every month or every day I was paid interest, for the first half of the year, I would be earning interest on $105. Yep. A little bit soft math there, but you get the gist. Yep. So the compounding frequency really matters. So when you use a compound interest calculator, it's important that you select the correct compounding frequency. Most times, your stock and your retirement account, those are all compounded daily. Interest in the bank might be paid monthly, and so on. Kevin O'Leary, who's from Shark Tank? Shark Tank wanted to teach his kids about compound interest and how money can grow with very, very little effort. By sneaking into their bedrooms when they were young, he put a few pennies into their piggy bank over and over again with the amount added growing a little each time. Okay, it's so like he snuck in and put in two cents and then snuck in and put in three and then four or whatever. Yeah. Whatever it was. If we did that, we'd probably be arrested. Kevin doesn't want us <laughs> in his kid's bedroom, but Bob, you could do that for your Casey kids. Carter, yep. Yeah. You earn an extra $1,000 one month, let's say, because we went and we kicked butt at work. Yep. And you decide to do the right thing, the smart thing, and instead of spend it, we're going to invest it. Okay. And we put that $1,000 in an investment account where we earn 10% per year. Okay. For instance, like we invested in the S&P 500. Sure. At the end of the year, that $1,000, Bob, is worth how much more? If at 10%, you said? Yeah. $100. $100. So now we have? $1,100. We're killing it. Woo! We are super Look rich. Just kidding. But this becomes our new balance for year two. And the next year, we don't earn $100. We earn $110. So now our balance is 1210 
right? We earned in that situation interest on interest. Now we're all sitting back here and saying, honestly, who gives a crap about an extra hundred dollars or an extra hundred and ten dollars? But if we never invested another dollar, and we only our principal was a thousand, right, Bob? And we never added anything else. Yep. In 30 years, Chad, take a guess. What do you think it'd be worth? Make a wrong guess. We don't care. Twenty thousand dollars. Pretty close, actually. Seventeen thousand four hundred and fifty. Awesome. So, Bob, what's it cost to go to college right now? Uh, 20 grand a year. 20 grand a year, probably for tuition, right? Yeah. More in some cases. But rarely less. Dave's kind of signaling us closer to 40 right now. (laughs) Let's say that was tuition. Yep. It could have cost Bob just $1,000 if he would have started planning for it. 30 years in advance in this example. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? Sure. So anticipate having children before they're born, 10 years before they're born, put $1,000 aside. By the time they're college age, in this example, you've got $18,000 approximately. Yeah. Or why don't we start doing that for our grandkids? Absolutely. For other people that we care about. For our own retirement. That's right. (laughs) Our own retirement. You took $1,000. You wouldn't, most of our audience wouldn't miss $1,000, even if it took you a whole year to save it. And yep. then just drop that somewhere on January 1st of the next year and never touch it again until you're ready to retire. It's anywhere from 10, 20 or more, depending how many years you've got thousands waiting for you. Yeah. So let's do another piece of math, Bob. Get your calculator out. Okay. Let's say that I, inv- instead of investing $1,000 up front, I invested $10 a month for the same 30 years. How much total principal will I have put in? So you're doing 120 a year times 30 years, 3,600. 3,600. At the end of 30 years, by only putting $10 a month in there, yeah. we will have generated $23,094. So instead of going to Starbucks twice a month, I could create myself 20 plus thousand dollars down the road. Based on my math at Starbucks. We cost you a lot. A <laughs> okay. So, and Ben, you're saying that because I'm going to put $10 in and depend if it's paying annually. Okay. But maybe that $10 is $11 a month to, and now I'm at $21 and yep. then that 21 becomes. Yep. Okay. Okay. When we think of compound interest, the rate of return matters. If you were to invest in something very conservative and it was four or 5% annual return, it's going to grow way slower, way slower than if it was something that was seven or 11 or 12. Sure. Now, the way you figure that out is this concept called the rule of 72. So Ooh, this Bob, sounds fancy. Get your calculator out. Okay. The rule of 72 tells you how many years it would take to double your principal, your original investment, based on the rate of return. Okay. So take 72, divide it by 5% return or 5. So take it, divide it by 5. Okay. What do you end up with? 14.4. So it takes you 14.4 years. To go from one thousand dollars to two thousand, okay, at a five percent return. Got it. Let's take the rule of seventy-two and calculate an eleven percent return. It's going to take you six point five years. Take you six point five years to double. Well, let's take the thirteen percent return, which is the S and P five hundred for the last ten years. Okay, five point five. Five point five. Literally, you could start doubling your money quicker and quicker and quicker. It turns into a really, really large amount. So at a 13% return, which you're saying the S&P 500 has done over the last 13 years, I would have been able, or 
that 13%, sorry, I would have been able to double my money in five years. Yeah. Let me put it into a, a, a simple story that'll tell you how truly powerful this is. And it goes back to the time that Warren Buffett and I were hanging out together. Okay. It was just him and me and 10,946 other people. <laughs> but we were at the Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholders meeting, which he opens up to the public because I was a stockholder of his $230 share of stock, which I had one of. That's all you need to get That's in the door. That's all I needed to get in. There you go. He sat up there and was talking to us about the power of compounding interest. He said, listen, everyone, if I would have put $10,000 in a savings account when I was 16 years old, seems like a lot of money for a 16-year-old, but if you think of somebody working 13, 14, 15, 16, that's very possible, isn't it, Bob? Yeah. If I would have put $10,000 in, in an investment account and never added an extra dollar, and that investment account was simply invested in the S&P 500, an index fund, which is based on the 500 top companies in, in America. He would have made that investment when he was 16 years old. And this was five or six years ago when I was there at his meeting. He asked the audience, what would that $10,000 be worth? Remember, he said, I never added an extra dollar. I only did it once. We looked at each other, my friend Brian and I, like, I don't know, millions probably, a million, two million, three million, four million, five million, I don't know. We understand compounding interest. But I was embarrassed. When, when he read out to the audience, it would be worth over $51 million. Wow. Five years ago. How old was Buffett at that point? He's older than shit. Like, like he's <laughs> this would be like probably like he, he would have been what in his late seventies or something. So this is like a sixty-year arc of that of that return, but taking ten thousand dollars and turning it into fifty-one million. My God, I'm doing quick math over here, Ben. Would you tell me that a nine percent estimated interest rate is something that, from the track records, we could probably have found? I think we could do an eleven percent or. Something because that's what the S and P's. I'm, I'm looking back. Years. So the S and P, since it was introduced in 1957, has has had an annualized return through the end of 2021. And granted, 2022 has had some, but of 11.88 percent. Okay, I'm just going to put 11 percent because I've got a compound interest calculator in front of us, and I'm saying that 10 years compounded annually. If I took $500 and instead of taking my child to go see Taylor Swift, that's the cheapest I could find for one ticket, I could have $1,500 to give my kid when they go off to college. Okay. Just a simple thing that's happening in the world right now. How much money are people spending on the tickets that you could put that money aside? Instead of taking your tween to go see the concert, you could be giving your kid money to be able to have a used car when they go off to college, to be able to have a whatever it's going to be. Put that into compound interest and wait till they have kids and give them the money. Now they have the money they need to help their kid get started. I mean, in, in the workbook, which you can get at winmakegive.com forward slash wealth or forward slash resources, download the workbook that we want you following along because we want you to be a part of our contest and win a bunch of prize and money and all that kind of stuff. But we want you to do the homework and really do this. There's a bunch of printed uh, compound interest calculators. Right. And you can go and find the rate of return on one side and the amount of years on the other. Let's break it down in a few other examples. $10,000 invested once. Let's say the grandparents give $10,000. Okay. At a 10% rate of return, compounded daily. Yep. In 20 years, it'd be worth $74,000. For a lot of kids, that would have been enough to pay for their college or a massive chunk of it. True? True. If we would let that money sit for just 10 more years... Let's say the kids say, I'm going to get a loan for college and leave that money invested. It'd be worth 200000 Kids would be 30 now. If the kids left it for another 10 years, it'd be worth 545000 It becomes a massive amount that would pay off homes and pay off college 
and pay for medical emergencies. Compound interest is truly, truly magical. You know, Ben, this makes me like, as I sit here and listen to this, there's that old adage, you know, the rich get richer, right? And I think when you're not somebody that has money, you think the rich get richer because they take their money and they, they can do all these things, right? If they have an idea, they can go do the idea. But I, the reality is the rich get richer because they understand things like this and they put their money into places and they can leave it there for longer, right? They don't need to rip it out when they have an emergency. They don't need to. And, and it's, it's this that actually makes the rich get richer or, or the, 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 the ultra rich get to where they are like Buffett, right? Yeah. Cause they had the time and they were able to let it keep growing. It's the, it's the story about if I offered you a million dollars today, or I'd give you a penny and I would double that total for a month. What would you take? Now, if you know the story, you know, you're going to take the penny. And if you've been listening to Ben and compound interest, you know, double, Okay, because by day 27 or something, you're still not even at a million dollars and you're saying, wait a minute, I should have taken the million, but it's like five point three million dollars is what it'll come to at the end of a month. If you let it run for 30 days, doubling that. And that's the easy story we've probably all heard that comes to explaining compound interest at such a high level. The month matters. If we're going to do that, let's pick December. <laughs> right? A 31 day month, right? Yeah, not, we're a not, 29, pitch a not a 28 day month. 28 or a that's, leap year February. February. So that's 30 days, Chad, by the way. So yes. you were doing that in November. You would, in Correct. December, by the way, that money would have been, been worth $10.6 million. Right. That one yeah, more day. Definitely pick December, Ben. So in your workbook, there's a few things that we want you to go through that are really going to hammer this topic in. One, you're going to look at an example of how Ben, Chad, and Bob all put $1,000 in a month for 10 years, and one person stopped at a certain age, we're gonna see who ended up being the winner. Next, we're gonna show you how $1,000 grows over time based on the rate of return. And we want you to go in here for your homework and pick the number of years, like you'll go down and say for 40 years, I'm going to have a 15% rate of return. What would that 10 or what would that $1,000 be worth in 40 years? It's 388,000. Then we're going to have you write down some items that you buy daily, some items you buy weekly, some items you buy monthly. And then you're going to ask yourself the simple question, what if I didn't and I invested it the same? Now, this is almost go back to doing the highlighter exercise because you could take those red, maybe some of those yellow things, and you could start looking at it and saying, is that Hulu subscription worth it versus what if I put that money into something? Yeah. Maybe you spend $4 daily on coffee, and at the end of the month, that's $122. So take a compound interest calculator and take $122 invested monthly for the next 30 years and see what that turns into. Maybe you go out every week and you spend $100 on clothes or whatever that might be. Take that, what's $400 a month at a 10% or 11% return? What does that equal? Do the exercise, show your kids, your spouse or your partner, so you understand that that ice cream or that movie or that Hulu or that- Peloton membership. Peloton membership. It actually adds up. Next, we want you to look at a compound interest calculator, which we've included, that talks about not just an initial investment, but a monthly investment and how that would grow so that you knew, for instance, what would it take for you to become a millionaire based on how many years you have before that's a reality. So, for instance, if you only have 30 years before you need to retire, let's say you're 40 today and you want to retire at 70 and you need a million dollars, you would need to save $2,000 a month for 30 years at a 3% return. Well, 3% isn't very good. So you'd be like, well, that ain't going to work for me. I need to have a more aggressive. So go down to the chart that says 10% and see where do you find a million dollars? Well, in that situation, you would only have to save $400 a month for 30 years to get close to a million dollars. It makes a big difference when you think about the rate of return. If you only had 20 years to get to a million dollars, 
but you could still get that 10% rate of return, you would only have to uh, invest about $1,200 monthly to get there. This is gonna show you how little you have to actually save to truly become a millionaire if you're patient and you can let your money grow over time. Your last exercise is to go through the worksheet of the compound interest using the rule of 72 where you get to figure out how your money doubles based on the rate of return and just do some math. Look at what a 15% or 17% or 7% would turn into if you took 72 and divided it by seven. If you took 72 and divided it by 14. If you took 72 and divided it by 17. We're gonna give you some examples of what the S&P 500 has done over the last 90 years or 30 years or 10 years, what the Dow Jones Industrial Average has done, what uh, real estate appreciation, what businesses do. And then you're gonna figure out, what do I need to invest to get on track with my wealth goals? Write down your ahas, figure out what you have to do to fund your retirement, and just start thinking about it. As we go through more of the Win Make Give Wealth series, like one of the upcoming sessions about retirement planning, mm -hmm. we're gonna dig in even deeper and this is gonna make a lot more sense for you. All right, so folks, compound interest. Very confusing, yet at the same time, once you get it, oh, you're gonna win, okay? This is not something that just applies to your wealth, even though that's what we're talking to you about today. This is something that applies in every area of your life. We want you to be able to make that investment so that you in the future don't have to anymore make those investments. Bob, compound interest, give me a final thought on it. Um, it's once you understand it, it's, it's one of those like once you see it, you can't unsee it things. Mm -hmm. But it also is something that, you know, we talked about this last time, but it's it's almost breaks the brain, right? When you, but when you look at these formulas laid out and the, and you realize what the difference between like 10 or 20 years is the the power of time is a, is a massive part of this. And, you know, Chad, you're 50, I'm 45. We don't have quite as much time, but there's some people listening to this thing right now that, that have either kids in the car with them. Yep. Right. Or, or that are, that are real young and, and early in their career where they've got a long runway of time and, and, you know, I mean, you and I both wish that we were in that position today at 18 and, and could really understand this stuff. But compound interest, it's that to me, it's it's how the rich get richer. Yeah, Bob, I, all I'm hearing from this whole episode, if you put aside a thousand dollars for each of your kids right now, they'd be ready to retire when the time gets here. Yeah. And it would only cost you two thousand dollars right now to have those kids retired without them having even to do anything because you have time to let that money well, I ain't just telling sit. them about it. I ain't telling them about it. There you go. Put the money <laughs> aside. Tell them about it when the time is right. Folks, the time is always right for you to share the wealth series with somebody. There is somebody out there that needs to hear it, needs to come along this journey with you. They can go back still and listen to all the episodes. They can go to winmakegive.com slash wealth. Get registered. They can easily find the links to all the episodes if they don't even want to scroll back wherever you're listening to podcasts right now share the episode, bring them on the journey. Until the next episode, as our journey continues, we want to remind you, do good.